It steals our attention, our Self time, money, attitude, head speed. Comparison tries to steal a little bit of everything. It's hard to live the lives we crave when everyone else's seems so much sweeter. But what if God had more in mind for us? Let's talk about comparison, the thief of everything. Well, this is Travis Pastrana. This is a picture of Travis. Travis is considered an action sports icon. He has pioneered the progression of action sports. And when I say action sports, I mean like BMX and, you know, like skateboarding and snowboarding and just different like extreme sports you've probably heard it referred to as, right? And so he, he's been a pioneer in that space for decades. At the age of 14, Travis Pastrana won the World Freestyle Motocross Championship in Las Vegas, Nevada. And if you're over the age of 14 and you haven't won a world championship yet, I know you're already thinking like, dang, I've wasted my life. But that's not true. Uh, but just more about Trav. Uh, since then, he's won dozens of X Games medals in multiple disciplines. He sort of pioneered the, the term going X Games mode before it was even a thing. He was the first person to do a double backflip on a dirt bike uh, in competition. I watched it and went absolutely ham in my living room when he did it. Um, he races rallycross, he races NASCAR, he base jumps and skydives. Once he even skydove, sky, he was, he, he skydived. He's, he has skydiven without a parachute, and he lost his sponsorship with Red Bull because he jumped out this plane, no parachute, holding a Red Bull. And I was like, that's so sick. Um, but, you know, not so much for the sponsorship because it's like, you know, you're kind of encouraging people to kill themselves. And don't do that. It gives you weight. He just tested that theory, and he lives today to tell the tale. Travis is a branding and social media and marketing genius. He created an internationally touring live action sports show called Nitro Circus. Um, and it features dirt bikes and scooters and skateboards and just a bunch of different random things going off of what we call a mega ramp and uh, just seeing if people make it. They also do a lot of world's firsts. So stunts and tricks on these different vehicles that have never been done before by anyone. Uh, there's also this n uh, annual Nitro World Games, which is sort of like the Olympics of action sports. Travis Pastrana invented this. It includes people from all over the world throwing down world's firsts on various things. Travis Pastrana's home is known as Pastrana Land. It's uh, located in the forest of Davidsonville, Maryland on about 65 acres. And it's, it's like the mecca for extreme sports athletes. People will come here to learn how to backflip a dirt bike. There's foam pits and bag jumps and different stuff like that where you can kind of uh, have progression with a little bit of safety as much as possible in these things anyway. Uh, Travis is married to a professional skateboarder named Lindsay Adams Hawkins. They got married in 2011, and they have two little girls named Addie and Bristol, who are nine and seven now. This picture was taken a little bit earlier. Um, and so that's Travis Pastrana in a nutshell. There's so much more. Like, the Wikipedia page was gigantic. I had to stop. Um, plus, frankly, I just get jazzed up about Travis Pastrana. But who cares, right? Like, why did I just tell you all that and spend the next, the past couple of minutes just fangirling over my man crush, Travis Pastrana? Well, because for as long as I can remember, I've been in and out of this comparison trap with him. And I think that's probably putting it too nicely. I wanted to be him. I wished I was him. I, I've, I've been jealous, I admit to you now, for years. Like, he won that X Games gold, the first one, in 1999. He was 14, I was nine. And so he was always a little bit above me in age, someone that I could just follow their life and like aspire to be like and just glean inspiration from and just like marvel in the accomplishments and the talent of this absolutely insane person. Today we're both in our 30s, we both have kids, we're both tall, skinny, white guys. I mean, a lot in common, frankly. Um, he just did a lot more with it than I am, I guess. I don't know. Well, he's, it's just different, right? It's different. It makes me feel like sometimes when I think about Travis Pastrana, like, dang, am I a loser? No. No. But 
makes me, I, I'm, I'm just being honest. I've felt like that before, like when, because I, the comparison trap, right? Should I be doing more? Am I living up to my fullest potential? Why doesn't my life look like that? It seems so fun. It seems so awesome. Why not me, man? Why not me, God? What Travis Pastrana is sort of doing with his life at times has made me kind of not like my own. And I, I, I've caught myself a lot in life looking at him and, just, and, and losing a little bit of self-esteem and losing a little bit of self-confidence and, if I'm honest, a little bit of self-worth. Have you ever idolized someone so much that you wanted to be them? Like, for real? Is there someone like that in your life even right now? Like, who is your Travis Pastrana? Who could you just list off a whole laundry list of, of accomplishments and features about? Is it, a, is it an artist? Is it a, like a content creator? Is it an athlete? Do you have a person like that? There's this follower of Jesus named Paul, and he wrote um, a letter to this church in Rome. And if you have a Bible or the YouVersion Bible app on your phone, you can get in it right now. We're going to be in... Romans chapter 12. And the audience at the time, they were dealing with a lot of the same type of stuff. They were comparing themselves to other people, and it was hurting their self-esteem, and Paul wanted to encourage them. And as you flip there, the, the cool thing I like about Paul is that Paul, at one point, he hated Christians. He persecuted them. He had them imprisoned. He was against the movement of Christianity since this, this guy, Jesus, came on the scene, and he started saying, I am God. And if you believe in me, like, you, you'll have eternal life and just whack stuff like that. And Paul's like, no, that's against the system. Re like, re resist that until he had an encounter with the resurrected Jesus himself, and it changed his life forever. And from that moment on, Paul changed his ways, and he said, now I want everyone to know what I know about Jesus, the love, grace, mercy, compassion, kindness, forgiveness that comes only from knowing him. He was actually the real deal. And if that's not compelling enough evidence that Jesus is real, I don't know what is. This person who had that encounter and flipped and changed the trajectory of all humankind. And we have a chance to read this letter that he wrote to people who were struggling with comparison 2,000 years ago. But look, we're still struggling with it today, obviously. He says in Romans chapter 12, verse 2, Don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Notice, it's not changing anything about you on the outside, like your clothes, your style, or, or like what you look like, or you know, what you're able to do or not. It was convicting me just reading it. And he says, then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and perfect and pleasing. Paul's like, don't worry what other people are doing too much. Don't worry about that. And he, and he really quickly changes the focus off of other people, and he puts the focus on you. You see the word you appear a couple times. See, Paul knew something that we need, and it's a perspective shift. We need a perspective shift, a whole new way of thinking. And he says, if we can unlock this new way of thinking, then we can start to break down the walls of comparison that start to tank us. The NIV, I don't know what translation your Bible's in. If you read the NIV, it says, this is accomplished by the renewal of our minds. And uh, Paul wrote in Greek at the time. He wasn't writing in English. So I went back and looked at the, at the Greek word for renew, and it's uh, anakinosis. And anakinosis is a renewal or change of the heart and life. It's, it's, it's a, literally a renovation and when I think of a renovation, I'm thinking of, of like there's this old house or something, and, and the old stuff is taken out, and sometimes it's even broken down, and then new stuff is brought in, and it's, it's better than it ever was before. It might be the same house, like you, but it's been renovated. And he's saying this, this has to happen in our minds. Paul says this renovation will result in transformation. And, and the Greek word for transformation is metamorpho, which is where we get the word metamorphosis. And I don't know about you, but when I think of metamorphosis, I automatically think of caterpillars changing into butterflies. And 
like they're the same creature, I guess, but they've unlocked a whole new realm of possibility for themselves. Like now they're mobile. Shoot, now they can fly, and they don't even need Red Bull. They have a whole new experience that they never could have accessed before because they metamorphosized. They, they were transformed. A few verses later in verse 6 of Romans chapter 12, and I'm going to read it out of the message translation. Paul says, so, he's like, we, we do that, right? So, and since we find ourselves fashioned into all these excellently formed and marvelously functioning parts in Christ's body, look around, that's us. Together and collectively, we make up Christ's body. Different parts, different pieces, all part of the same thing. He says, so let's just go ahead and be what we were made to be. Stop trying to be someone else, a different part. Like, that's not you. We need you to be you. And do it without enviously or pridefully comparing yourself with other people or trying to be something that you aren't. Paul's saying, let's just go ahead and be who we were made to be. And as I sat and compared myself with this other person, I found just a whole lot of comfort in that. And I started to examine myself, and I've been in the YouVersion Bible plan, Thief of Everything, with some of you guys. And every single day, I'm sort of reminded to just like, to celebrate how God made me, yeah. To celebrate how God made other people, yeah. And just to be comfortable and confident in who he made me to be specifically. Because look, I'm not Travis Pastrana, but Travis Pastrana is not Ren Harpole either. He doesn't have the privilege of sitting in this room with you guys who are hungry for Jesus. Like, There's no place I'd rather be on this planet than right here, right now with you. Goosebumps. And the same is true for you. These are not going to be on the screen, but I have a couple of verses for you. God made you on purpose, for a purpose. You'll hear me say that a lot, but it really comes from Ephesians 2.10. Ephesians 2.10. In Psalm 139, I mean, the whole chapter really, but one part says that you are fearfully and wonderfully made. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. Psalm 139. It's not like everyone else is made so well that it's just scary and ridiculous. You are too. 1 John 3.1. You are a child of God. Romans 12, 6. You're talented. I got more if you want them. Just find me after. But the bottom line this morning, because we need to be done, is choose to see yourself the way God sees you. This is my challenge. This is my encouragement. Not just for the duration of this series, but for the duration of your life. To choose to see yourself the way God sees you. And if you don't know how he sees you, Get into his word and read about it. Find out he's told you. It's right there for you to read anytime you want to. And if you can do that, you will replace the self-deprecating thoughts of comparison with God's thoughts toward you and toward others. And that is a pretty awesome place to be. I can tell you from experience because I'm walking in peace I no longer want to be Travis Pastrana, okay? Like, I'm over it. I think he's great. But I want to be Ren Harpole, a child of God, a husband, a dad, youth pastor, Riverbend Youth. It's pretty sick. So um, who are you? Who are you? Who are you?